Hey guys, welcome back to Young Americans Abroad, your best place for weekly content on young American soccer players playing overseas. My name is Austin Van Churn. And my name is Patrick Ferry. And as always, guys, welcome to our show. So guys, we got a special episode for you today, and Pat, we're taking a look at all our Yaz who played over in Germany this past season and, you know, reviewing their performances. That's right, Austin. A lot of the players that were uh, adapting to the rigors of the Bundesliga, as well as, uh, you know, making some exciting jumps in the uh, the academies. Um, so a lot of uh, great content to get into with you. That's right. And this will be the first installment of our season review series we're doing this summer. So, Pat, you know, in the next few episodes, we'll be look, taking a look at players from England, um, Holland, Belgium, Denmark, you know, all the players we talked about this season, kind of digging deeper into the seasons that they had, and then also projecting, you know, what we where we think they'll be next year for their respective teams. That's right, Austin. Again, plenty of players across the globe. Uh, we're going to provide all you Yacht viewers some great insight and uh, who we think are really going to, you know, shine and uh, be future U.S. stars. That's right. And, you know, we'll finish our episode today as well with a little segment, uh, I would say reaction to the USMNT game against Guyana starting the Gold Cup. So, you know, at the time of filming this, we haven't seen that game yet. So let's hope it's a, a positive uh, reaction video. But Fingers crossed to the start of that Gold Cup, Austin. That's right. So, you know, all that and more in this episode. Now let's get into it. So to start our first segment today, we're going to start in a you know traditional way of starting with Christian Pulisic. So Pat, you know, digging a little deeper into his season, he did play 1,700 minutes this year in uh, three comps and 30 games. So you know the, the three competitions were the Bundesliga, the Champions League, and the DFB Pokal. He scored seven goals and had six assists. And, you know, Pat, it was kind of an up and down season for him. But, you know, he did get that big money move to Chelsea. And, and you know, that was the, the, the big highlight, I would say, of his season. Yeah, Austin, absolutely. I mean, even, um, again, th that transfer is huge. And it was kind of a tough uh, part with him with the injuries and Sancho emerging. But, again, really kind of excited to see him, um, you know, finish out his Dortmund uh, season where he really started his European career. Um, didn't get the title, but... Um, nevertheless, right. um, Austin, it's, you know, an end to a chapter in Germany for Pulisic, but a really exciting new beginning in England. That's right. And, and kind of going into a little bit more detail where you said, you know, Jaden Sancho kind of leapfrogged over him to start the year. That was, that was very true. You know, Christian struggled to, to start the season. He did have an unfortunate injury that kept him out of the, the September USMNT camp. So that was definitely something that kind of you know, hindered his performances to start the year. And, and Jaden really took advantage of that and, you know, pretty much relegated Christian to the bench, at least in the Bundesliga. You know, he did start uh, all four Champions League games in the group stage after he came back from injury. But, Pat, he just didn't really look like he, he had that same um, shine that we're accustomed, accustomed to seeing from, from Christian. Um you know, in the past and in his performances with the USMNT. He looked kind of disjointed with, with Dortmund to start the year. And, you know, Dortmund were soaring. So it was it was kind of easy to, to pick out, um, you know, when he was playing with them. He just didn't, didn't really play very well. Yeah, and I'm sure that was a little tough on him, uh, you know, uh, mentally to kind of, I'm sure he recognized that Austin, um, that, yeah, that, that section where the team is doing so well. And, you know, you're happy for the team, but at the same time, you really want to be an integral part of that. Right. Yeah, that's very true. You know, I think his struggles were, like you said, kind of a, a lot to do with, with the mental state he was in. Um, you know, injuries are tough. And, and like I said, he, he had some injuries to start the year. Getting leapfrogged and, and pushed out of the lineup is always tough. And then, you know, that big Chelsea move was going on behind the scenes. So, you know, that definitely, I feel, played a role in, in his slow start to the year. And um, yeah, so, so then, you know, moving on later in the year, you know, January 3rd, he signed the contract with Chelsea for 64 million euros. So big money move. <laughs> very, very big money move. Biggest uh, money move in U.S. soccer history. So, you know, that was really impressive. 
you know, very exciting move to see because it, it's going to help U.S. soccer grow, grow our brand, you know, give more players opportunities to play hopefully in England as well as, you know, just another point of proving Christian to be kind of the, the you know, path maker um, going abroad and, and playing in Europe. And, um, you know, that was really cool to see. Um, and I think that kind of took some pressure off of him. You know, however, starting off 2019, he, he not maybe personally, but, but Dortmund suffered some setbacks. So, you know, they did get kicked out of the DFB Pokal and, and Christian played very well in this game. But, um, you know, that was disappointing to see from Dortmund. Then Christian started the, the UCL round of 16 game against Tottenham where they got uh, trounced, Pat, 3-0. And Christian did not look very good in this game, was very ineffective. And, um, you know, that was definitely a, a low point in Dortmund and Christian's season. It was, it was not very good. Yeah, certainly a little concerning there. Yeah, so, so that was disappointing. Um, and then, you know, right at the end of, well, I guess mid-March when he was called up to play with the USMNT, you know, he started that game against Chile, scored a great goal, and then pulled off with injury, I think, in like the 35th minute of that game. So, you know, for all the highs that Christian Pulisic experienced and, um, you know, in that move to Chelsea, it just seemed like, uh, you know, it kind of came, he kind of came crashing back down to earth, um, you know, in those first few months of 2019. So, um, yeah, it was, it was a rocky season, you know, starting off kind of rocky, great move you know, experiencing some hardship there. And, uh, you know, once he came back from injury, though, Pat, kind of like you said in the beginning, he he really kicked into form and played some of his best, you know, football we've seen him play at Dortmund. And he finished the year, his last three games, starting all three games and also getting a goal in the, or an assist in all three of those games. And, you know, I think he was man of the match, actually, in two of those games, too. So nice. um, definitely cool to see him persevere at the end of the season, you know, it was looking kind of bleak for him at, at, at certain periods in the season, just, just, you know, struggling to find time in the Bundesliga. But, you know, at the end of the season, he proved his worth to Dortmund. And, you know, unfortunately, they weren't able to win the Bundesliga title. But that was kind of out of Christian's hands. So, you know, it is what yeah. it is. Yeah, that, yeah, exactly, Austin. I mean, he it is great, like you said, to have him kind of – or have Pulisic finish the season uh, very strong and get those starts. Uh so, like I said, to end the Dortmund career. Um, so, yeah, obviously positive going into this uh, really exciting, uh, um, obviously with the Gold Cup here, but the exciting off season and the start of the Premier League. Yeah, it'll be cool to see him in the in a Chelsea jersey, no matter what. You know, yeah, I'm not even a being a Liverpool fan, fan Austin. Uh, you know, maybe I'll have to watch Chelsea now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it'll definitely be worth the uh, you know worth the price of admission, or you know, worth the watch. So, absolutely. Um, yeah, and now with Mercy Osari gone too, you know, we'll have to see who Chelsea hire. Maybe, maybe uh, Lampard? <laughs> yeah, maybe uh, Dwayne Holmes coach. So, uh, yeah, that'll be fun. And uh, so, yeah, you know, Christian Pulisic all in all, like I said, it was kind of a rough year at times for him on the pitch. Um, I would probably say his, his hardest season to endure thus far, you know, the season, um, I guess, last year where – you know, we, we lost to Trinidad and missed the World Cup. That was probably a, a hard experience to, to you know, go through. But this season, um, you know, it was filled with some lows, filled with the high of, of making that move to Chelsea. So all in all, Pat, I said, you know, if I had to rate his season, I, I don't think we're going to do this for all the players we covered today. But I would say his season was like a 6 out of 10. Um, you know, I would say four of those points could be, for that move and the other two were for his performances, you know, kind of at the end of the season and, and showing that, you know, he is as good as, you know, as good as advertised in those last few games, he was, he was really good. So, right. You know, all in all pretty good season from, from Christian. Okay. Season. I don't want to say good maybe, but, but, uh, um, you know, a lot of anticipation for next year. Absolutely, Austin. Again, I want to quickly say it doesn't seem like, you know, the American player, which is exciting for marketing purposes for Chelsea. But uh, again, it doesn't just seem like a marketing stunt. He has really you know, great potential, great ability. And it's nice to see that. Obviously, there's a mix of that. But uh, to really see that soccer player, an American player paving this way is, uh, you know, absolutely incredible. Yeah, very true. So uh, now I guess let's move on to another player who 
you know, came in mid-season and, and looked amazing in his performances. That's and right, Adam, Austin. Would that be? Uh, amazing is one word for it. Can't think of anything else, and that is Tyler Adams, Austin. Um, so he was actually, uh, you know, for a while, a few seasons in MLS. Uh, you can almost call him an MLS vet with uh, the New York Red Bulls in a case. Just looked really dominant. Um, seemed like a player that was really overdue, you could say, for a move to Europe. Um, and excited to see him go to the uh, the sister club with uh, RB Leipzig, um, who finished third, uh, Austin, um, and will be playing uh, Champions League football, obviously, uh, in the Bundesliga. So great to see him make that move on uh, in January. Um, and yeah, and so just to kind of recap, Austin, um, from the beginning of the season, he made overall uh, 10 Bundesliga appearances and two in uh, the DFB uh, Pokal there, uh, one being an unfortunate final loss to Bayern. We'll get into that a little bit later. But to kind of recap, Austin, it seemed like just from the highlight videos and uh, words we were getting and uh, we were covering, you know, on our episodes before uh, when he arrived in Leipzig, uh, really seemed to assimilate himself very well, very quickly. I uh, was calling for the ball. You could see him being very vocal in training and adapting really well to his environment. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he he really jumped in right away and took kind of, I don't want to say a leadership role maybe, but but he definitely wasn't afraid of coming into that big situation. You know, Leipzig are finished third in the Bundesliga this year. They have a lot of quality players, but he didn't seem, you know, scared of, of you know, going to training with those players. And, um, you know, he, he, he looked very confident whenever he was on the pitch, um, sure of himself, you know, like I said, you, you know, not afraid to really um, – be a part of the team right from yeah, the start which exactly is exactly awesome it's tough for a player coming completely different culture you know different language and uh yeah it was it was impressive yeah absolutely yeah exactly what you said wasn't afraid of the moment there it wasn't too big for him so um really great to see kind of that adaptation um from like you said an mls player just uh again maybe that's not the uh exact pools like path but another pathway to see a, a really successful american player um you know start in the mls and then uh, assimilate so quickly. But um, I think some of the reasons we can get into during his time and how he assimilated so quickly, like I mentioned, he had the 10 appearances and, uh, you know, 12 total um, with the Pokal, but 10 of those were starts. Um, and then unfortunately had some injury setbacks uh, during the season with an abductor problem. But just to see him start right away, you know, it was really, really impressive. And, um, you know, I believe he actually had his first, uh, for a start there against, uh, uh, I think it was Dusseldorf, Austin, um, where yeah. he had, you know, played strong 90 minutes and had that first goal where uh, I think it was like a cross or something kind of, um, what, was, what was the first goal there? I think it was, it was well, pretty Well, uh, I think you might be thinking of Josh Sargent. That's right. It makes up <laughs> Sargent. Yeah, I apologize there. Getting ahead of myself with all the yas. But, um, yeah, just to kind of go over his, uh, his game there, um, he – you know, really was a ball stopper, won every ball, looked not out of place at all, was passing between the lines there. Um, and they had him in that pure CDM role, which I we really want uh, to see him do um, with the U.S. team. But, you know, we'll see how right. that goes. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you could just see his engine, his motor that he had, the ground he covered is so impressive. And those are kind of the highlights in, of, of his whole season there with Leipzig. Uh, like I said, kind of moving forward, line-breaking passes, um, you know, getting it to the forwards and the wingers, but really almost like when you're playing FIFA or something, Austin, and you're glued to that guy and literally, you know, whatever button it is nowadays, because I played FIFA way back when, a few years ago, but uh, just being able to stick onto the, the attacker there and take the ball from him uh, is exactly what uh, Adams does and makes it look like a video game. Yeah, yeah, it's very true. Um, you know, he did a great job defensively for, for Leipzig, was really um, – you know, a defensive standout for them. Someone who, like you said, was great at winning the ball back, great at sticking a foot in, getting, you know, a lot of interceptions in his time on the pitch. But the thing that really impressed me most about his jump to Leipzig was how, you know, comfortable he looked on the ball. Um, you know, that was something I wasn't too used to seeing from him at, at you know, the New York Red Bulls. Um, I, he, he was a player that, you know, that liked to pass the ball and, um, you know, combined with teammates, but he really looked very comfortable in any situation he was thrown into or passed into when he played for Leipzig. And I thought that was a big step in his development. And, you know, I'm really excited to see him take another, 
you know, step next year and continue to be as consistent as he was, to be completely honest. Yeah, absolutely, Austin. It's it's so exciting. Really unfortunate that he has the he won't be at the Gold Cup, but again, yeah. kind of gives him time to recover and get that Champions League season and start with a really you know start off strong with RB Leipzig. Um, and yeah, again, just want to you know quickly note. I think overall, um, I I would say probably out of a ten, just for his you know, quick season there, you could kind of combine the MLS and the European season, but I'd even say maybe like 8.5 to a nine, maybe I'm being a little harsh. I'd say um, maybe close to that nine there. Um, if you won the Pokal, maybe a 10. I'd yeah, say maybe a 10, let's say. Yeah, yeah. unfortunate, um, you know, just because uh, I want to mention too, I guess uh, in April, like I said, he had the abductor injury, but he had, you know, that kind of took away all that momentum he had. And then coming back, shaking off the rust, especially against Bayern is really, really tough thing to do, especially, uh, you know, an angry Bayern who, um, you know, almost see, let this season, season slip away. So, um, you know, I'm sure they you know definitely wanted that, um, especially after being kicked out of the Champions League too. But, um, yeah, right. I mean, all in all, Austin, um, I think Adams is, you know, a really, really exciting player. And I think, uh, you know, he certainly uh, deserves one of our uh, YA awards. That's right. So Tyler will actually be our YA player of the season for Germany, um, just because his play was so stellar for Leipzig in you know the short amount of time he was with them. Uh, you know he really he really looked like a standout, and I think he's you know we both think he's very deserving of being uh, you know named as the best player from uh, you know the group of players we cover in Germany. So. Yeah. Congrats to Tyler. Looking forward <laughs> to him uh, for doing uh, bigger and better things here uh, for the 1920 season. That's right. Yeah, for sure. So uh, now let's move uh, over to <laughs> Dortmund's close rivals, uh, Schalke, and talk about Weston McKinney, who, you know, made the most out of a, a horrible season for Schalke, I would say, Pat. And, um, you know, yeah, yeah, that's that's as much as I could really say. <laughs> yeah, it uh, wasn't pretty, know, Austin. <laughs> Yeah, it w wasn't pretty at times for Schalke, but uh, yeah, Weston has moments. And, you know, he played 2,329 minutes in 33 games this year across the Bundesliga, Champions League, and DFB Pokal. And he scored two goals, including a great first goal in the Champions League group stage against Lokomotiv Moscow, which was the game winner in, I believe, like the 88th minute off a nice header on a, on a set piece. Um, so that was really cool to see. And then he also had six assists this year, which led all Schalke players. And that was including that one nice assist, Pat, that he had against Bayern. So just Ooh, wanted to yeah. know those, uh, yeah, that, was, that was a beauty. You know, those, those uh, details in there, because cause I think those were pretty big moments where he stepped up. But the big storyline for Weston this year was that he played seven total positions for Schalke. So that was very interesting, Pat. And <laughs> do you think you could name all the position you played? Yeah, let, let, me, uh, let me see if I could uh, jog my memory here. Um, you know, nothing on the left, um, at least for the most part. Uh, center back. Right? Okay, that was one. Um, yep. Right back. Yep, another one. Um, right mid. Yes. We yep. saw him up top, uh, forward striker, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, we could say the right mid. Did I always oh, said the right mid? Uh, central mid. Uh, yes, sentiment. sentiment which, uh, yeah, missed off camera. <laughs> um, uh, CDM. Yep. Um, yeah, one more. And then the cam. That's correct. Ding, ding, ding. Your, uh, West <laughs> McKinney fast facts. Fast fact positions, yeah. So, I mean, uh, surprised you didn't play a goalie, Austin, but. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, it was a crazy year in terms of positions. Um, you know, seven positions is just. You really can't succeed, Pat, when you're playing seven positions. You, your responsibilities are constantly changing, you know, game to game, and it's really hard to get continuity. Yeah. And almost more, yeah, almost more credit to Weston for adapting so well to the different positions. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely a plus. You know, he he did he did as as good as he could. You know, changing positions so frequently. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely, you know, props to him. That was. Uh, yeah, that was a that was a bright moment on on his season and and maybe you could say Schalke's season, but just to go into a little bit more detail about their their brutal season, so they finished 14th in the Bundesliga and they finished second in the Bundesliga last year, so that was a big big drop off. Um, you know they got embarrassed in a seven nil loss to Man City in the round of 16 in the Champions League. Ooh, so I saw that those so legs, like, that was ugly. 
Yeah, that was that was very bad. And unfortunately, Weston was a part of that, playing right back. But uh, yeah, oof, not much you could do about that. Uh, not much you can do when uh, uh, Sane and Sterling are out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they'll get you sometimes. <laughs> Even uh, Sane torch Yedlin too sometimes in the oh, Premier League. So yeah, uh, you know their manager Domenico Tedesco resigned um, like two months before the end of the season. So he waited a very long time and then eventually um, saw fit to leave the club. So that was bad. And, uh, you know, they did have one silver lining, I should mention, and that was beating Dortmund 4-2 to two in, uh, I think it was like mid-April. And in that game, that was, uh, you know, basically the title ender for Dortmund. Um, you know, they were close, I think, up until the last day they were – you know, mathematically eligible to win the, the Bundesliga uh, title. But that was kind of the game that really, you know, threw them behind Bayern and, and made it more Bayern's race to lose rather than Dortmund's, uh, you know, race to win. So, right. And I'm sure um, Weston will be, uh, you know, cracking jokes to uh, his pal Christian about that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he got the best of uh, Dortmund at the end of the season. You know, Dortmund beat Schalke earlier on, but that was definitely the more important game and Schalke won it. So, um, yeah, you know, Weston, like I said, you know, made the most of the season. Um, I think he was the player that gained the most from Schalke's season. Um, you know, he was one of their most consistent starters. He did struggle with injuries from time to time. So, you know, in terms of minutes, I, I think he was, he played the sixth most amount of minutes, but in terms of, you know, games that he was available for, I think he played pretty much, you know, all the games he was available for. So that was cool to see. You know, at the moment, according to Transfer Market, he is the most valuable player on Schalke's team at 20 million euros. So, you know, that's really cool to see, Pat. And that's, uh, you know, I think that'll be, that's that's good going into next year. Um, and we'll definitely, you know, give him a good standing, at least right from the start with David Wagner. Um, you know, we'll have to see what David does with the team and how he plays. But, you know, we're both expecting Weston to kind of step up, uh, and create a good partnership with with David since you know we have that American connection. That's right, Austin. Yeah, the American connection. So hopefully he doesn't uh, form another Huddersfield. But uh, you know, really excited <laughs> to see what he can do uh, in Germany. And um, you know, again, this won't be a you know an easy uh, transition, uh, or you could say kind of more relaxed. Weston should be very alert and uh, you know ready to go and show his A game. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm. I was just about to get into that. So you know, there are a few things he can. Um, you know, improve upon this season. The one thing that he did get caught out on from time to time with is his laziness getting back and tracking back in defense. You know, um, in a lot of the games, you know, especially in the midpoint of the season, he was playing in that cam roll pat. And, you know, you could argue he wasn't supposed to really track back too much. But at the same time, when he was, you know, in that that eight or six roll from, from time to time, he, he kind of exhibited the same... Um, I hate to say laziness, but I guess that's a okay word yeah, to use to describe it. Um, he did he did sometimes you know um, switch off and not get back and defend as well as he should have. Um, you know some other things he could improve upon are you know continue to push his touch and creativity going forward. You know I think that's the one thing that kind of separates him from a lot of other sixes and eights in the world is that he does have a little bit of flair and ability to get the ball forward and combine with players. So I don't think that's something he should, um, you know, stop doing. I think that's something that he should improve upon. Even if he is asked to play in the, you know, in the sixth role for, for David Wagner, I still think he should try to get forward, you know, two to three times a game. And I think he could be a big asset getting forward. You know, we'll see in the gold cup here, he'll probably play in that. That's uh, right. Austin, no injuries to him, please. We need him. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we, he's he's got to stay healthy too. That that could be another thing you can improve upon too. But you know, you can't really help injuries sometimes. But you know, I think uh, yeah, next year he should he should form a pretty good partnership with David Wagner. Um, Pat, like you were saying, sorry to cut you off earlier, but he needs to not come into the season complacent. Um, you know, right now he's he's got a good standing at the club with Schalke, but last season really didn't mean anything for Schalke. So. Um, you know, he can't really rest on his laurels. Um, he needs to challenge himself coming into the year and kind of feel like he's he's at square one with all the players, even though, you know, 
according to transfer market, he's he's the top dog now at Schalke. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely good to see you, though. Definitely see him at the top dog. And again, we we saw Schalke the year before have a successful season. So let's let's get back to that with Weston leading the charge. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. So uh, now let's go over to uh, now let's go over to Josh Sargent. Uh, <laughs> That's right, Brendan Brevin. And uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> getting ahead of myself Austin so now we're uh, we're yeah like too, you said too excited too excited, too excited here <laughs> for him next year that's right and more uh angry is on the gold cup roster but talk about <laughs> that more um yeah so sergeant actually um just want to highlight again and recap um you know his time here the timetable um so he's a 19 year old striker um he transferred um to Bremen on January 1st of 2018 um so he's with the uh, the second team there and then July obviously of 2018 uh, got up to the Werder first team here and you know we saw some praises from the coach and we were hearing some rumblings we're getting excited uh, for the 18-19 season teased and, uh, us. he teased, he teased us, us. <laughs> yeah that's that's per perfect uh yeah Fl uh, Floyd uh, Kofeld definitely did that so yeah, um, yeah just to <laughs> just to highlight a little bit Austin the, the appearances he made 12 in uh the region league in Nord um with seven goals and two assists and then he had 10 uh, Bundesliga, Bundesliga excuse me appearances uh, with two goals um so we saw the first half of the season he's kind of playing with the, the second team there and then he you know got his debut there um and i think he it was in the 76th minute i think or 73rd uh, against dusseldorf and he you know scored a, a few minutes in austin and this is the goal that i was trying to describe earlier i was so excited uh to see him get his debut where i think it was like a cross and it bounced around he kind of headed it right in um this pretty close touch. Yeah, yeah, first touch, um, the fastest um, goal I think scored uh, for Bremen in their history. Uh, oh, really? Them. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that wow. that was really exciting to get that statistic there. Um, but yeah, and then I think right after that he um, had a really uh, you know great game against Leipzig, uh, where he was on the flank there out in the uh, the left. Austin had a nice uh, kind of trap and pass it back into the middle. Uh, was able to possess the ball kind of kept running and the play was developing more in the central part of the field, but not many of the defenders uh, for Leipzig were kind of tracking back and Sargent saw the opportunity, sprinted down that left flank, kind of cut right into the, uh, you know, the middle kind of diagonal into the 18 there and uh, found himself, uh, you know, free, uh, passed it to him on the left and, uh, you know, it was a really clutch finish, Austin. Um, I think it kind of deflected off the post, but uh, you can see him celebrating with the teammates and excited for his second goal with Bremen. Yeah, we were so excited when uh, when that happened, and then uh, it seemed like the minutes dried up after that point. Unfortunately. Yeah, Austin, that was yeah really unfortunate. Just because um, I think from there, the next time there's only a a few eight or nine other subs appearances, and uh, most of them I think just totaled between maybe five or ten minutes at most. Um, just the last few minutes of a game where he was kind of just running around, uh, wasn't able to get as a you know. I guess get into the game is what I'm trying to say, or get more involved. I uh, didn't have the chances, so that was a little disappointing. And I know um, maybe you know better than I do, but I know they had a few injuries and he was playing, and then some players might have come back and uh, found it a little harder for him to uh, get in the field. But all in all, I think uh, just kind of the end and how it went out, it kind of almost flatlined, which we're a little concerned. Maybe right. I'm being a little right. harsh, but kind of almost just a flat line there. And I would, you know, again, maybe not going to rate this player per se, but maybe I would put him like dead in the middle, like a five or a six, maybe a five probably, but just kind of uh, a little underwhelming for all, maybe the hype that we all as fans generated. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we were, you know, really expecting a lot of him coming into the year. Um, you know, it was great to see him make his Bundesliga debut, score in his debut, and then also score another goal too. Um, but yeah, it just seemed like when he got the opportunities after, you know, he scored those goals and, and took advantage of the first opportunities he had, it just seemed like he couldn't follow it up ever with, you know, consistently good performances. Um, you know, he did get a few starts. I want to say two starts. And in both those games, you know, he he didn't really show well. Um, you know, it, it's 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 the Bundesliga. It's you know one of the top leagues in in the world. He, if you get that opportunity, you got to take advantage of it. And unfortunately, it seemed like he didn't really take advantage of that. You know, those opportunities where he started games. So um, yeah, it was it yeah. was tough to see that. But you know, I still believe in him. I know we still believe in him. We think he's the future. Uh, you know, at the striker position for us. So yeah, it's got to kind of yeah. 
break back into the fold next year. Perfect segue, Austin, too, just because uh, Burr Halter did mention, um, which we're disappointed when to leave, I guess kind of made it more sour note for the season, but also uh, end of the season for Sarge, maybe a huge motivator um, being yeah. left out of the Gold Cup. Um, you know, this could really make or break, and if he has that mentality to improve. And uh, Burr Halter even said, um, you know, unfortunately, Zardis. <laughs> um, but Altador, um, are, are have the experience maybe like eight to ten plus years on him. Um Right, Maybe yeah. something around that, and just very veteran. They, he just flat out said, "We think they're farther along, more ahead, I'm prepared, and we're going to go with these strikers now." But did say to Sergeant that you know, really high hopes, and you are going to be the striker of the future. You know, he said the striker of the future, so that is you know really exciting to see because um, you know, we have seen glimpses, and just you know, we, we like you said, we do believe in Sergeant, and I think the most the key areas he needs to work on Austin is. Um, being able to kind of, like you said, the Bundesliga is a high level. Um, just being able to time his runs correctly and get into the flow of the game more. And and also maybe even develop physically more and get used to that physicality of the Bundesliga because uh, you can get lost in there and uh, kind of eaten up, I guess you could say, uh, in that swarm of, uh, you know, all those, you know, high-level Bundesliga players. Um, um, from defenders. The teams. And yeah, defenders. and them. Exactly. So I, I think this is a, a really crucial... Um, um, I guess intersection or kind of stop along the way of uh, trying to think of the right term there for Sargent's career. So uh, a little underwhelming here, but again, still a, a lot of potential. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with, you know, all those points you just said. Um, yeah. The really disappointing thing or the, like you said, the thing he's got to work on is um, his off ball runs. Cause it, it just seemed like he didn't really have the, the speed and and the strength at the moment, I, I do think he'll get stronger. But it did seem like he struggled with, you know, some of the defensive players he went up against. Um, you know, if you're not going to be quick to the ball, then you act, you know, you have to outwit the defenders and kind of be in the right position, kind of like we saw Sebastian Soto do at the U20 World Cup. Um, but you know, I think that's one of Sargent's strong suits. So you know, maybe it was just kind of. You know, things got a little too too big in the moment for him. wasn't able to really capitalize on on getting those those minutes for the first time in his career. I mean, you know, he's never really played for a professional team until Bremen. So, you know, it's still probably very new to him, and and maybe you know he just struggled with with the you know how big the moment was in some of those uh, you know appearances he made. So, you know, we'll keep we'll keep our eye on him, and we think you know he'll be. I, I think he'll be, you know, a part of that Werder Bremen first team this season. Um, you know, some players at, at Bremen are, are leaving, like Max Krusa, you know, Aaron Johansson's leaving. Um, I feel like there may be another striker on the way out, too. So, you know, I, There's I think... There's a chance, Austin. Yeah, unless he gets loaned out, but I haven't heard anything about that yet, so... Yeah. I'm sure uh, you'll keep us plugged, too, uh, along with the Boone American count, so... Hey, man. <laughs> Shameless plug, shameless plug. Shameless plug. <laughs> but also, I know uh, we're shifting uh, back to uh, Schalke, Schalke America, you could say. That's right. And that would be for Haji Wright. So Haji actually made his Bundesliga debut this year and scored his very first Bundesliga goal. Um, so that was cool to see. You know, all in all, he did only play 194 minutes um, in over seven games in the Bundesliga. And he made this, this appearance or this debut during a time where Schalke were – very thin at striker, um, and that was, you know, the main reason why he got promoted. They just were out of strikers, Pat. Um, so, <laughs> you know, got hey, chance, I guess. Yeah, yeah, congrats to him for getting that <laughs> chance. Um, but unfortunately, you know, in these games, while he while he did score, and it was a nice goal with a West McKinney assist, um, you know, he really, Pat, just didn't look up to the pace of the Bundesliga, you know, physically and also just – you know, mentally, to be honest with you, I think the biggest thing he really needs to improve upon next year is, you know, playing more to his frame. He's a six foot four player and it seemed like he played at, like he's a five foot 10 player. Um, you know, he was constantly getting bullied off the ball, you know, wasn't even winning headers against some of the defenders he went up against. Um, I don't want to cut you off, but that shouldn't players. be the case at all. That shouldn't no, be the case. No, he's bigger than most of the players on the field. Um, so, yeah, I mean that's just something that's that's got to change if he really wants to make a an impact in a you know even just play in a European league. Uh, you know, I'm I'm not too sure if uh, if playing in Europe is his future, 
But uh, yeah, he's he's got to improve that his physicality and also just his off ball running. Um, you know, just his movement in general. I, I guess I should say his off ball movement. He just seemed a little slow at times to react. Um, you know, mentally it, it just seemed like he was kind of not locked into the game, um, you know, was overthinking at times and making the wrong runs, getting in the way of players. So, um, you know, while getting those minutes in the Bundesliga this year was great to see, you could definitely see some some flaws in his game and some, you know, inefficiencies or uh, deficiencies, I guess I should say, in his game that could limit him in the future. So, you know, Pat, I did think ahead a little bit for, for Haji and I think a good move for him this upcoming season, you know, he's gone to a two Bundesliga on loan, a two Bundesliga club on loan in the past, and that was Sandhausen. Um, you know, I think it might be time for him to switch it up a little bit and go on loan to maybe a league like Switzerland. Um, Ooh, that's an interesting take, Austin. I like that. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a league that some Bundesliga clubs will look to loan players to. You know, we saw Russell Knaus go to, I believe it was Luzerin, Luzern or something, um, a team over in Switzerland when he was at, uh, what was it now, Freiburg, I feel, Canals, uh, Hoffenheim uh, maybe? Yeah, some, uh, something. Yeah, it might have been Hoffenheim. I can't remember off the top of my head. I want to, I want to say it was Hoffenheim. But, um, yeah, it, you know, Switzerland's a team – or, excuse me, Switzerland is a league that some Bundesliga clubs will look to utilize for players that may not get a chance in the two Bundesliga – and I think that may be the case with Haji because he went on trial with Union Berlin last year, you know, didn't get signed, and we, we heard it didn't go too well. So, you know, Pat, we'll, uh, we'll uh, keep an eye on Haji. But, uh, you know, good for him to make his Bundesliga debut. Now it's, you know, up to him to kind of build upon it for next year. Yeah, absolutely. That's, uh, that's all you can hope for. So, again, yeah, like you said, get, he got those goals and uh, more Americans making, uh, making statements slowly but surely abroad. Yeah. So uh, now let's go over to, you know, another striker um, who we have high expectations for in this upcoming season. That's right, Austin. And uh, that is none other than, drumroll, <laughs> Sebastian Soto. So uh, <laughs> thank you for that. Yeah, but uh, he is an 18-year-old striker here with the uh, Hanover 96. Um, so a really exciting 18-19 uh, season for him this year. Um, he had 17 goals in 24 appearances, Austin, um, as well as uh, six assists for the, the U19s. Um, so that was really exciting. I think they play, actually, I want to mention, too, in the Bundesliga Nord, Nordost, uh, Junior A division. So just another one of those uh, regions, which I'm sure you understand more. Um, they're very <laughs> complex. But <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, yeah, one of four, I think. So Yeah, so, um, yeah, I mean, that, those are you know awesome stat lines. And, uh, again, just want to kind of uh, – also highlight with all those exciting, uh, you know, numbers he was putting up that he had three first team appearances, Austin, um, okay. in, debu- in the, yeah, in the eighteen nineteen season. And his debut was against yeah. uh, Wolfsburg. Um, with 10 minutes left, he, uh, he got in and we saw a few other cameo subs throughout the uh, season, but really exciting to see. Yeah. And unfortunately in those games, you know, he did a lot of uh, defensive work or, or, you know, trying to press and win the ball back. I think he had maybe a total of, five touches in his three appearances. Oh, yeah. Uh, Not but, you know, yeah, it was him making the most of an opportunity, you know, to, to be in that position, you know, playing very well with the U19s and, and being a player that the club values for the future. Yeah, absolutely, Austin. And speaking of their futures, I guess the perfect segue, um, <laughs> just because they were, uh, you know, relegated to the, the two Bundesliga. And um, I'm not sure the extent right now if her, again, some – uh, chat on Twitter here and there of, you know, I think uh, Soto as well as uh, Glasser, which we'll talk about later, but uh, concerns of them even staying with the club or staying put. But um, in my opinion, I think, uh, and I think we both discussed this, but uh, being in the two Bundesliga could be a great opportunity uh, for Sebastian to really, you know, break on and really cement himself onto the first team and uh, push himself to that next level because it is a, still a very competitive league and they're definitely going to have aspirations to get right back into the Bundesliga and what better way to uh, kind of help lead the charge there and, uh, you know, start that professional career uh, in a way, in a sense, I guess, for the first team. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, Sebastian did great at the U20 World Cup this summer. Um you know, like like we talked about, he got his appearance or, you know, made his Bundesliga debut last year. 
and seems to be a player that, you know, if he signs that, that pro first team contract, he seems like a player that they'll give minutes to this year. And, you know, Hanover in a very weird state right now, you know, they had one of the worst seasons in Bundesliga history. Um, you know, couldn't really score too many goals and gave up, I think, a record uh, in the Bundesliga amount of goals. So, um, you know, they really just need help in general. So yeah. I think Sebastian would be a little foolish uh, to, to leave Hanover, in my opinion. I, I think that uh, that statement is very accurate. And, uh, yeah, good to touch on the the, um, the US U20 World Cup, which I want to mention, too. Like you said, he had two braces, one against France, which is a very impressive team. And yeah. that definitely uh, helped his stock uh, further and uh, is why I think he is very deserving, Austin, of one of our YA uh, players in Germany to watch. So you guys should keep an eye out for Sebastian Soto because uh, I think next season could be very, very big for him. Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, you know, like we said, if he stays at Hanover, I think he could definitely get, you know, maybe 2,000 minutes, Pat, playing for uh, for Hanover, maybe like yeah. 20 appearances. I, 20 think that's a, I think that's pretty fair to say and, uh, yeah, very, uh, you know, bold but also very accurate. So I, I completely agree with you. And I just want to mention, too, I think some really key, uh, you know, strengths, too, which we wanted to touch on. Uh, were again, some of his, you know, off-ball runs, and which we saw with the U19s more, but – um, just being able to really read the game well, as well at the U20 level, um, you know, see see the field and make those timely runs right off the peel off of the uh, center back and back line shoulders um, to avoid being offsides. And uh, he just has that knack for goal, and he's a poacher. Um, I know a lot of the coaches and people have described him as a, a striker that's just um, you know present, I guess, at the right time, uh, right place at the right time. Um, which is exactly what you want from kind of a classic striker like Soto and someone we desperately need, uh, you know, want and wish to, uh, you know, develop and help our uh, current situation at the senior level. Yeah. And the, and the thing that, you know, in addition, to all the attributes you just said, Pat, the thing that really stood out to me at the U20 World Cup is just his mentality. Um, you know, he seems like a very confident player, a player that's very invested in, you know, continuing to develop and improve his game. So that's, you know, on top of all the physical attributes and the great runs that he makes, that's kind of the other thing I'm really impressed with and excited about. Yeah, and I would almost argue that is almost the, the most important um, for that mentality, especially coming up yeah. with a young player. So. That's um, what we've seen with Tyler, Christian, Weston, you know, Josh Sargent to a point, I think. Uh, you know, they all have very strong uh, mentalities, and it's really helped them in their moves. That's right, Austin. So again, uh, a yeah player to watch, um, Sebastian Soto, and uh, you know all the best to him uh, moving moving forward there. That's right. And to keep it at Hanover, we want to talk next about Chris Gloucester, who you know maybe even deserving of that player to watch, uh, you know, trophy award as well. Yeah, right. Maybe year. a duel. <laughs> yeah, I mean he's in as good a position, in my opinion, as Sebastian Soto is at Hanover. Um, and, you know, a lot of this came from, you know, what he did with Hanover this year. Um, you know, he started off with the U19s after making a move last summer to, to Hanover and ended up getting promoted to their two team um, about, I would say, a few months into the season, maybe two months into the season. So, you know, he played almost exclusively with that two team this year, um, played a little over or a little under, excuse me, 1,200 minutes in 16 games. And had three assists for that team too. So you know that's those are some pretty good stats. Um, you know, was a consistent starter for that two team, which plays in the fourth tier over in Germany, and uh, trained a lot with the first team. Um, you know, during the season, um, you know, we learned that we found that out on the Scuffed podcast. I think he said it um, there. Yeah, so that right. was some some key information that we learned. Uh, yeah, from, great podcast. From great podcast. Yeah. And, uh, you know, kind of like Soto, he had a great U-20 World Cup with the U.S. So, um, you know, that I think is really going to leapfrog him with his position or his standing at Hanover for the upcoming season. Um, you know, he was so consistent, Pat, in, in all those games. Um, you know, the game that really stood out to me was Nigeria, um, you know, combining with Sebastian uh, right as the second half began for that, uh, you know, nice – one two touch with I guess Tim Weah played it to Gloucester oh, and then yeah. Gloucester played it to Soto for that that second goal that was you know very nice and that was beautiful that was Barsask <laughs> yeah 
yeah, it was, it was, it was world class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so, so yeah. And, 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 you know, his defensive, uh, you know, game against France, I thought was very impressive as well. You know, France was a great opponent and he was going up against the player Moussa Diaby, who, you know, was constantly trying to run at him down the, down the, um, well, I guess our left side, France's right side. And, you know, he stuck in a foot on him multiple times um, and just took the ball right away from him. So that was really impressive to me. And, you know, I think it impressed a lot of other people. And like you said with Sebastian, Pat, there are rumors of Chris potentially going to PSV on a full or first team contract. But, you know, I, I think you were you were saying earlier that there's some rules over in Holland where um, you have to play non-Dutch player, pay do- non-Dutch players more than you would. Um, yeah, you know, they just player. changed that. I don't know the specifics, Austin, but like you said, but they're, yeah, they definitely really bumped up the price to uh, – uh, prevent things like this from happening. Okay. So, yeah, you know, I don't, Pat, I don't really see that being a, a very viable move or, you know, a realistic move. I think it's more just kind of rumors being spread. Um, yeah, yeah. And again, that's, uh, you know, rumors are being spread just for the, the fact that uh, Glosser is such a, I think he's really increased his stock, like you said, just a highly rated uh, uh, left back there. And he, uh, has all the the potential to, uh, you know, really blossom into a first-team player. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, you know, Hanover is a great place to do it. Um, Like I said, Hanover let in, I believe, a Bundesliga record for the amount of goals last year uh, (laughs) seeded in the Bundesliga. So They fixed the leak, Austin, the leak of goals. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, they need defensive reinforcements, and Chris is a player that they definitely – you know, value, maybe not as much as Sebastian Soto, but, you know, he's definitely a player that they want to keep. And um, I think it's only a matter of time. You know, I think Chris will get an opportunity with them if he stays at Hanover. And, you know, I don't think he'll be an instant starter or anything right from, you know, right from preseason training. I think it'll take some time for him to get, you know, some minutes, get worked into the squad. But, I definitely could see him, you know, getting some consistent playing time this year um, in the two Bundesliga and, you know, maybe racking up like 1,500 minutes. Um, I would say that's pretty good for a left back. Yeah, yeah, I I couldn't agree more. I think that's the next logical or realistic step. And, um, yeah, I mean, like you said, I really don't have anything too negative to share and uh, nothing nothing really too much to critique um, for, for a player of his caliber. Yeah. Yeah, he uh, yeah he really showed his his quality at the U twenty World Cup. So we just want to see more of him, and uh, you know hopefully we'll be able to see more of him next year at Hanover. That's right, Austin. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I was going to also mention too because um, I was there at the uh, Concacaf, uh, um, you know, set uh, tournament before uh, the the uh, I'm sorry the World Cup, and oh, yeah, okay. like he had some uh, concern uh, concern just because he wasn't you know pushing up much and i don't know maybe necessarily the competition again was a little lower and again just want to highlight to um all that you said that he really um kind of stepped it up against a high, much le- higher level co- uh, competition and really convinced me uh, because i had my doubts a little bit i'll be honest guys uh but i don't i think those doubts are uh, are going away finally so just wanted to throw that in there quick yeah yeah so uh you know, yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on him for next year and uh, report back. But now we want to go over to Bayern and talk about another Chris and Pat. Who would that be? That's right. And this Chris is uh, none other than Chris Richards uh, over with Bayern Munich. And he is a, a 19-year-old uh, center back, Austin. Um, so he has had uh, quite the uh, the season as well, um, which I know um, he did have a little brief stint from FC Dallas and got loaned a little trial, I guess you could say, a little loan with Bayern. Um, and then the, the official, uh, you could say the official transfer, um, was for, uh, you know, this, this year and this past season here. Um, and so in 21 appearances, um, you know, he had 19 starts, um, you know, for the U19s there. So I think, uh, you know, that shows he really, again, another player that came from, uh, you know, FC Dallas, you could say, which is a very highly respected academy, I think, or, uh, you know, youth setup now at this point, Austin. Yeah, they're doing some good things over yeah. in uh, Dallas, yeah. They really are, yeah. And just, um, yeah, just to say, um, again, 
Um, so for the whole season, just to highlight some, you know, some of his performances and the brief highlights, I guess we were able to see, um, not as a, uh, you know, common footage there, but, uh, he looked, you know, obviously very, very strong athletic ability, um, you know, which you want to center back, uh, very good in the air, winning aerial duels and things like that. Having some, I think some goals, uh, you know, ahead uh, heading goals, um, yeah, he had a few goals this year. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and again, which is really important too, is seeing those passes breaking through the back line and looked very comfortable in possession and on the ball. Um, so, you know, that's definitely another element uh, you can see um, to the modern center back, I guess you could say these days is uh, someone that can kind of do that and push up the lines and, um, you know, cause some of the uh, midfielders, or I guess the, the uh, opposing strikers to try to close them down as well. Um, so, the, you know, those were kind of some of the really big highlights and then um, wanted to shift as well, Austin, uh, because he had a great, uh, you know, end here to the season, I guess, with the, the U20 World Cup. Yeah, I mean, he was a, a big standout player for us there. Um, just looked so confident on the ball, calm in possession, and strong going up into, you know, defensive tackles. Um, yeah, and, you know, Bleacher Report just put out, like, a top 10 players at the U20 World Cup list. And Chris Richards was actually number six on that list. So, oh, all right, yeah. Um, shout out to Bleacher Report then. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty high praise. So, yeah, yeah, very high praise. And uh, I mean, Austin, yeah, like, like you said, um, he really assured the the back line there, and um, you know, that's all you can ask for, especially um, you know, with with the center back pool, which is I guess kind of interesting when you're looking at it from the U.S. senior team because we have you know a few decent names, but um, definitely to add his name to the card for the future, I think. Um, would definitely be wise because I think this is another player that I'm, you know, really excited about, and I'm sure uh, everyone is as well. But could really see him uh, becoming a full pro. Whether that's at Bayern uh, remains to be seen, just because of the, the level of difficulty. But um, I guess to also, you know, reflect back to Bayern as the upcoming season uh, with his success on the U19 level, um, he is now, you know, going to be promoted to the uh, uh, Bayern two team, Austin. Right, and Bayern 2 just got promoted themselves to the three Liga uh, in Germany. So definitely, uh, you know, higher quality of play as opposed to some other two teams, um, you know, like some other Bundesliga clubs have. That's so. right, Austin. And I know um, we were talking about that off camera as well, and I think my initial thought was, oh, it would be interesting to see if you could go on the line alone to a two Bundesliga team. Um, but I think you had a really good point, which I actually almost, I am now in agreement with you that, uh, maybe some time, uh, at the three Bundesliga, you know, would be an appropriate, uh, step for him to kind of solidify himself in that team. And maybe we see him kind of get recognized by the Bayern first team, or if not, just get that full season under his belt there and then maybe move and progress up to the next uh, division. Yeah. I mean, he's still pretty young, you know, right now he's 19, I think he'll turn 20 this upcoming season. So you know, I don't see how going on loan as like a priority, in my opinion. I just think, you know, loans are a slippery slope. You know, it, it all depends yeah. on what team you go to. If you play, I'm not sure a, a team in the two Bundesliga will really be looking to to make Chris their, you know, one of their two starters, um, you know, for the season. So in my opinion, I think if he played with Byron 2 this year, like I said, in a higher level of competition than, than most other two teams, I think that'll be, you know, a very good experience for him. You know, Byron are looking at selling Matt Hummels and or Jerome Boateng this year. And it looks like they're also selling Lucas Mai, which is another one of their younger center backs who was kind of ahead of Chris Richards in the pecking order. If you're looking at just, you know, center backs at the club. So, you know, if they do sell, you know, all those players, then, you know, Chris Richards could maybe be in line if there's an injury crisis, um, you know, at the back for Bayern this year. But I, I really just think that maybe staying with Bayern for this year, um, becoming an instant starter or a lock starter for that two team, I think, you know, that may be a, a good move for him. You know, yeah, can, a club really should be. Almost like a, almost like a reverse uh, Haji Schalke situation, uh, but for obviously, uh, you know, Richards in the back there. Um, to yeah. Take the answers there, but again, yeah, like you said, um, again, don't want to repeat, but yeah, like I think, like you said, the most uh, reasonable move would be the the, uh, the three Bundesliga here with Bayern too, and uh, uh, really uh, dominating there, and uh, see where we can go because again, um, I think he has all the potential in the world to be a world class center back, Austin. You heard it here. <laughs> right. Oh, you're, you're 
You're marking that? You're, you're putting your stamp on it? I'm marking that, Austin. I think one day he will be a Bundesliga defender. Okay. I like that. I agree with that. But, uh, yeah, so that's that's good to hear that uh, <laughs> that Chris has your uh, – your stamp of approval and uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's you know it's good that uh you know chris had such a successful u20 world cup and we just hope that buoys uh you know him on to bigger and better things next year so now let's go over to a player in the two bundesliga a player that we don't talk about too much but we thought we should mention in this uh you know review episode as he had a somewhat interesting year and that would be kevin lankford so Kevin ended up, and if you don't know who he is, he's basically a dual nat who mo- mostly plays right mid. Um, and, you know, he played for Heidenheim to start the year, then earned a transfer to FC St. Pauli in the winter transfer window. So, you know, that was a, a move um, in essence to basically go to a team that, you know, is competing for um, promotion each year. That's, uh, you know, kind of the position that FC St. Pauli find themselves in every year. So, you know, I, I think that was a very good move for him, but all in all, you know, he played only 540 minutes in 11, two Bundesliga games this year. And that was for, for both clubs. So, you know, he did struggle with injuries from time to time. Um, and then just, you know, struggled a little bit until the end of the season to kind of get into the the 18 for for FC St. Pauli but you know overall I think the move that he made this year was was a good move um it shows ambition for him you know he's not a very flashy player he's a player that um you know you know relies on his physicality you know he's got a pretty big frame and you know he's kind of a typical German player in the sense that you know he does a lot of the dirty work pat and then also you know likes to um you know, combine with players up the pitch, not really, you know, take players on one-on-one. He likes the to... American Areola. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, I would oh. say that's a, that's a fair fair analogy maybe, you know, in terms of hardworking, uh, that, that hardworking uh, attitude or mentality. So, um, yeah, you know, Kevin Langford may be an option for us for U23 Olympic qualifying. Um, you know, he's only 20 at the moment. He'll turn 21 this year. So... Just thought we'd mention him, Pat, since, uh, you know, I think he's still a player that could add something to us, uh, you know, going forward. We'll, we'll see. Maybe you'll have, like, a Fabian Johnson-type rise. Yeah, uh, absolutely, Austin. Like you said, so... Good player. Yeah, like you said, still a young player and uh, has room to grow. And, uh, yeah, again, um, <clears throat> I don't want to be super critical. Maybe not uh, the highest, uh, you know, potential. But he still, again, like you said, maybe could be a, a role player and make an impact in some way uh, moving yeah. forward. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> cool. So uh, now let's go over to, I guess, Julian Green we want to talk about at uh, Greuther Firth. So, Pat, take it away. That's right. All right. Uh, JG23. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he is another player here, Austin, that um, um, I think we, we could kind of say had a, uh, you know, average uh, season if you're if you're doing that scale again a one to ten kind of that not another average season <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um yeah unfortunately i mean um he, he was a decent uh bundesliga two uh, two bundesliga player excuse me um and he uh the kind of was deployed out in the wing as well as uh being involved in the central uh midfield and the kind of the attacking midfield role as well um, so he was kind of, you know, placed a- around that for Goethe Firth. And uh, I knew he covered a little more than I did, but he had four goals and three assists in the season um, with um, 29 appearances uh, in the league and then 30 total um, and 27 uh, starts. So to equate that, that was over 2,300 minutes played, um, which again, uh, for his career is, you know, really impressive. I think he's 23, somewhere around that. I, I don't just- have... Four, maybe not. 24 yeah so we'll again soon. yeah so. yes that 23 24 range so uh during his early time you know with byron sukart things like that he you know was not seeing the field so i guess you could kind of say um you know finding his home at growth first um he's now getting the playing time um to really kind of develop as a player um yeah, yeah. still fairly young yeah you know um the biggest qualm with him or the biggest uh gripe people have with Julian Green is that he just doesn't produce enough. Um, and, you know, this year, four goals and three assists, it's, it is what it is, you know, in 30 games, you would hope for, for a little bit more production, but I think we've started to kind of really see, 
you know, who Julian Green is um, as a player. And, you know, that would be someone who has some, some touch, some technique, some quality on the ball, but is just kind of a step slow in his, his reactions and his recognition of the game. And, you know, I think it's safe to say, Pat, I think he may be a, you know, a second division player, you know, most of his career, if not all of it. Yeah, two Bundesliga lifer. As yeah. Austin. <laughs> <laughs> not to but, be confused yeah. with an MLS lifer. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, yeah. Again, because um, we, we saw him a little bit with uh, that interesting, uh, you know, past year, I guess you could say, with the, the U.S. Uh, friendlies there. Um, you know. Um, yeah, that great France goal. That was, that was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was interesting to say the least. Yeah, I mean, so I, I may, maybe a player that, um, you know, again, um, probably on the outside looking in, but um, yeah, like you said, I think he's kind of, uh, you know, found his home and his, his, his I guess his limitations, um, maybe it's not the right uh, term there, but um, again, just a little, little slower, uh, too slow of a pace for the Bundesliga, um, but can kind of, you know, be, be a present starter, a consistent starter in the second division. And uh, yeah, I mean, again, still could, you know, have a, you know, long length, lengthy uh, career here. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll, uh, you know, we'll keep you guys updated and, uh, yeah. So now we want to move on to a few players who, uh, you know, haven't made their first team debuts yet. Um, or at least played mostly with the, if not exclusively with the reserve teams this year. So to start that list off, we're going to go with, uh, Alex Mendez who just made the move over to Germany this past winter to SC Freiburg. And he started off with the U19s, um, you know, Spent a little bit of time getting integrated with that team, um, but eventually did win over a starting spot with them. You know, ended up playing around 850 minutes in 13 games for them this spring and scored three goals and had one assist. And, you know, his first goal was that really nice uh, half field goal. So, Pat, that was, uh, you know, pretty that's a, cool to see. Yeah, that's a statement goal, Austin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, it's a welcome to Germany type. Uh, <laughs> type so, um, you know, from what we saw of, of Alex at Freiburg, you know, we were generally pretty, impre- generally pretty impressed with his performances. You know, we didn't get to see too much uh, game footage. We only got to see some of the highlights. But, um, you know, we did get to see a lot of him at the U20 World Cup. And, you know, I think last week in my um, analysis of, of his game and his performance at the U20 World Cup. I think I may have been a little too harsh on him. Um, you know, going back and watching some of those highlights, he did have a pretty good game against Ukraine. Um, you know, also played pretty well against Nigeria. But I think it was just kind of a, you know, over time in that tournament, he lost some of his confidence, you know, that he had coming into the tournament from his, his stellar CONCACAF championship, uh, you know, run in that in that tournament he, he played great in that tournament um you know i think just some of that confidence kind of wore off pat and you know um you know he didn't have his his best game against ecuador you know for sure but you know we all have kind of bad games from time to time so um right and he's still a you know a young player he's had his, his challenges here and uh, again maybe someone who can who can uh, you know take this uh you know bit of i guess you could say not not his best or ideal performances and uh, take it with him and really, uh, you know, solidify his place in Freiburg and kind of, you know, take those uh, those steps as a young player. Yeah, and, you know, he got a good taste of what Germany is like um, in the spring here. You know, next year he'll be exclusively with Freiburg too. Um, you know, maybe he'll get a look in the preseason to train with the first team, maybe get some time and some friendlies. But, you know, I really see him kind of spending more time with that Freiburg 2 team. You know, there's a few flaws in his game at the moment, and the one would be he needs to really work on his consistency. You know, at times he lost the ball a little bit too much, had some errant passes in the U20 World Cup. So that's something he really needs to work on. And then also, you know, his physicality. You know, he's got to get a little bit stronger. He's also got to get a little bit quicker and, you know, just kind of think ahead um, to kind of overcome some of those physical deficits that seems like he kind of has as a player. He's got to be a little bit more, you know, on the front foot of, um, of things when he's in the game. So um, just some things to work on, Pat. You know, I think we're still pretty high on Alex. But, uh, yeah, we'll hopefully find out more about him this year. That's right, Austin. And uh, I guess uh, switching uh, over to uh, Wolfsburg, 
Um, we have uh, Michael Edwards, um, an 18 year old uh, center back who uh, originally is from the uh, DC United Academy. But um, yeah, he was with the uh, U19s in the Junior A, uh, actually won the title, Austin, on um, mm. the North and Northeast region. So uh, congrats yep, there to Michael. And, yeah, big win, Michael and the boys. <laughs> but um, yeah, just to highlight, he had uh, 14 uh, you know, total appearances there. Um, you know, throughout the cup and league and uh actually austin towards the end uh um had some call-ups to wolfberg uh, two's uh team there um made the bench uh, didn't necessarily get in but at least he made the bench and was uh, being recognized for his uh you know stellar performances throughout this uh, past year oh, okay yeah I, to be honest with you i didn't really know that so that's uh yeah that's that's good to see yeah yeah definitely good to see and uh you know, especially, uh, you know, we have a, a current Wolfsburg player who's uh, not so bad himself uh, for the senior team. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, that would be someone to, you know, learn from with this time at Wolfsburg, for sure. Right, right. <laughs> and um, just to kind of, I guess, want to throw out there quickly as well, um, um, he, I think, was, I believe, uh, wasn't eligible until uh, to January. So this, this past season, yep. he just was able to kind of play the second half. So... Um, again, uh, I think I was reading in an interview too quickly that he was you know, adapting kind of the change and, you know, um, to the higher level of play and just getting, you know, caught up in terms of the speed and possession because it's a whole different game, um, you know, what you're seeing some of these, you know, MLS players that are, or not MLS players, but the academy players over in the MLS that, um, you know, transition over and uh, take some time to adapt. But definitely seems like a very capable, um, you know, strong technical center back that Austin, I think, uh, you know, we can work, uh, watch out for in the future. Uh, you know, much like many of these other uh, German Ameri or Americans in Germany. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. And I kind of wish we saw him at the U20 World Cup instead of uh, Abubakar Keita, to be honest with you. That's Would right, be, that's right. Really nice. But, I'm not uh, sure. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure the extent of the relation to me with with Tad uh, Tab Ramos um, and what that was all about. And I know people were harsh on Kay, which I, I think he does deserve his fair share of criticism. Um, had some decent moments, but yeah, what if this would have been a player? Uh, I think we all would have been very excited to see uh, with this group. Uh, maybe maybe it was uh, just the lack of time with the group. I'm not sure. Yeah, or his club didn't release some, maybe. You know, they did have that championship game. Maybe they thought that was a priority. I don't know. That's right, that's right. But, it would have uh, been cool to see a Bundesliga uh, center back duo, though, for the U.S. Oh, yeah, yeah, that would have been fantastic. That's uh, the dreams, Austin. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, uh, you know, just wanted to kind of quickly highlight, um, you know, a center back uh, that hopefully we see uh, develop into a first-team player for uh, Wolfsburg, who's a pretty, you know, solid uh, German club there. Yeah, very true. And, you know, to keep the ball rolling, we'll move over to Bayern again and talk about Taylor Booth, who, just like Michael Edwards, um, you know, officially made the move or officially signed for Bayern um, in that winter transfer window and made his debut for the Bayern U19 team uh, this spring. So he ended up playing 419 minutes in seven games and was pretty much slid right in as a starter for that U19 team. So that was really positive, Pat. I... To be honest, didn't really expect that. Um, no, not at all. Pretty young player, too. You know, Obviously, he's 18 now, but he was a player that uh, waited for a long time to turn 18. Right. Um, well, correct me if I'm wrong, Austin. Was he an RSL Academy player? He was, indeed. Yeah. That's, an, yeah. that's another interesting academy. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> yeah, him, Ledesma, Soto, uh, Ochoa even. You know, they were producing some good players. So, yeah. Um, you know, Taylor's definitely, you know, another RSL player to watch. Um, you know, I, I really think he's going to be a big part of the next uh, U20 cycle that, you know, they'll play the U20 World Cup in 2021. Um, you know, he's going to be one of the, the main midfielders to rely upon. So, um, you know, that's really exciting for me. And that makes, you know, Taylor all the more worthwhile of following because, you know, he, he should be he should be a starter for that that team that go that you, you know goes to the World Cup. Um, yeah, definitely awesome. And just want to quickly throw out there too. I think uh, just Taylor Booth in general, um, just from the highlights and uh, being able to kind of you know read more into about his you know technical ability and uh, just kind of seeing the game. I think this is a player like I said, just has a really another high uh, ceiling that people really need to watch and put on their radars. Um, that that maybe uh, some of the really core uh, you know followers, uh, especially those you know people that buying us from America that supports the team. But I think this is a player that we're all going to, you know, really start to hear uh, throughout the uh, soccer community. 
Yeah, yeah, he's very smooth on the ball, um, very clean with his touches, and, you know, is also pretty physically, you know, a, a pretty physical player. You know, he, he makes a lot of good tackles, and, um, yeah, he's kind of like Chris Richards, but in the midfield. He's, he's just very calm on the ball, composed, and and a confident player who's not afraid to, you know, play possession. So We'll take a Richards booth, a uh, Bayern first team, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah yeah let's hope uh you know more power to both of them so um yeah you know uh he played exclusively for the u19s this year i do think he could make the move up to the two team um at Bayern next year i'm also not sure if he'll be el- eligible for the u19 team um this upcoming season but you know i would i would definitely say look to see him um play some minutes with that two team at Bayern, and also you know play right alongside Chris Richards again like he did this year so um, just wanted to mention uh, Taylor because I know he's a player we're both very excited about that's right uh, Austin and heading over uh, again we're going to uh, discuss another exciting uh, player that uh, we wish maybe had a little more time with the U20s uh, during the World Cup but that is uh, none other than uh, Ulia Yanez Um, and just want to quickly throw out there too, while I was looking at uh, USL highlight videos, Austin, uh, just because um, you know he wasn't with the club until uh, most recently, where he um, you know will be transferring to Wolfsburg uh, this summer, which is very very exciting. But they were pronouncing his last name Yanez, and I just oh, found goodness. that kind of funny there. <laughs> not sure why, but uh, yeah, that's uh, oof. yeah, that's not great. Not, not, a, not a great look, but uh, you know, yeah. heading back into the you know the USL games, there uh, just you know seeing some of the highlights as long as well as the you know his performances with the U twenty at the Concacaf Championship, heading into the World Cup. Um, he you know is definitely a player that I think has a, again a really you know high ceiling. I think he just needs some some. I wish he had some more opportunities. Obviously, the World Cup, but he saw some of his uh, you know passing and his quick silky moves. Um, he had some kind of nice flicks and the. You know, technical ability, skills. I see some like uh, step overs, things like that um, from the highlights that I was seeing, and um, played some beautiful passes. Um, you know, across goal, kind of curved them around the defenders, and put it in that pocket right behind the center backs and right in front of the goalie where he couldn't get it. That you know, you just kind of see that in the line. You're like, wow, that was you know, that was amazing. Yeah, yeah, he was. Uh, yeah, he, he. Whenever he came on at the Utah World Cup, he was he was bright on the ball yep. and uh, that's right. taking on players and stuff. So, yeah. And it's, it's great to see kind of Wolfsburg, uh, you know, obviously recognize that and then him kind of, um, you know, with a little time really, again, injected some pace and, uh, um, you know, different, different, I guess, dynamic when he came on the field for the, during the World Cup. So, um, you know, hopefully he can kind of bring that to the table and really uh, shine because um, I think there was maybe some moments where he could have played ahead of Conrad, um, but maybe, you know, through the camp before, um, Conrad may have, you know, displayed some things uh, um, that kind of warranted him to get that start. But uh, certainly would have liked to see him again, um, see him play more in that U20 World Cup. But all exciting. Uh, he'll probably, you know, he will be with the probably the U19 team, Austin, um, over at Wolfsburg. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, he, he joined right after the winter window. Um, so I, I think he'll still be eligible. Though. Yeah, That's he just turned 18 in April. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I, I would think. I'm not 100% sure about the rules, but that sounds pretty promising. And I think that would be a good place for him to develop. So That's right, Austin. So all, all the best for uh, Uliana is there. That's right. And, uh, you know, another young player who uh, made the most of his opportunity this year is Blaine Ferry. So Blaine is actually a player in the academy at Greuther Firth and was also a part of the U17 cycle um, in 2017. And, you know, Blaine made the move over to Greuther Firth, I believe, last summer. Um, you know, started off with their U19s, um, you know, in the fall. Then was promoted to the two-team and uh, ended up signing a, a pro contract with Greuther Firth uh, later in the spring. So, you know, it was very hard to find stats on Blaine's performances this year. But from, from all the things I've heard about him on Twitter – and just from some other people I've been, you know, in contact with, it sounded like he made some some good waves at Growth or Firth this year. And you know, Pat, to be honest, I wouldn't be um, surprised if he if he made his debut for for Growth or Firth this upcoming season. That's awesome, Austin. Uh, yeah, like I said, I think this is a, a great spot for him at a, a club that I think finished, uh, you know, towards the bottom of thirteenth, eighteenth, but has the oppor- he has the opportunity to uh, you know make an immediate impact. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, maybe he'll be involved in their preseason training um, and, and just, you know, their friendlies, get some, some game time there. But, you know, from what we saw of him at, at the U-17 World Cup, he's a, he's a crafty midfielder, Pat. Um, you know, he's got a little bit of bite and, and um, physicality, but he also is just kind of silky smooth on the ball and, um, you know, plays some, some good, you know, good passes, just is a very good possession-based player. So um, we need more of those, yeah. that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very true. We need a, a good floor of uh, possession-based players, I would say, or, you know, players who aren't afraid to pass the ball in uh, some tight areas. Right. But, uh, yeah, you know, don't have too much on Blaine, but just wanted to mention him. Definitely think he's a player that you should keep your eye on for this upcoming season. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll have more information as, uh, you know, he gets more, some more game time with, uh, with Firth. That's right, Austin. And now heading over to uh, Eintracht, uh, Frankfurt, uh, I think Timmy Chandler's club here. Uh, we're going right. to uh, discuss <laughs> here uh, Mason Judge. Um, so he is a very interesting uh, center back, 17 years old, that has, uh, you know, all the room to, uh, you know, all the, the, I guess, attributes to really succeed. Um, and so he actually, I want to quickly mention for his recap of the season, um, spent most of his times with the U-17s, um, 18 total appearances there. Um, and he also had four end-of-the-year starts uh, with the U-19s. And the key word there, I think, is starts because he was kind of brought up and uh, assimilated himself very well uh, right into the next uh, youth setup level, Austin. So that, that's always great to see. Yeah, that was a surprise to me. Um, you know, he, he made the most of his was the English passport and was able to sign right. for Frankfurt before he turned 18, which is always a plus. And uh, yeah, I got promoted as well. So that's, yeah, that's that's legit. That's awesome. See, and, and a fun fact too, uh, along with the U19s there, Austin, which makes it even more exciting, I think. Um, the, so they did lose the finals, I guess, and, and penalties there. But uh, Judge was actually named the defender of the uh, that U19 uh, Champions Tournament there. Um, with Eintracht, so you know that's you know a pretty exciting uh, you know accolade to have. But unfortunate for the loss, but um, you know I wish I could say I was able to see more footage um, of Judge. But I'm very excited uh, for what to come or for what is to come. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, yeah. I didn't realize that. So that's uh, yeah, that's 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 good praise. I would say. Yeah, absolutely, Austin. And again, we saw him a little bit the the U seventeen uh, U.S. team, um, you know, in the spring here. So uh, again, I think well, this is a that was the one player we were missing from the U seventeen Concacaf tournament, and we oh, <laughs> we yeah. severely missed him. So yeah, that's um, right, that's right. So that's yeah. that's one player I think we have to definitely watch um, for, you know, with the youth team setups uh, going forward because he definitely should be involved. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, I, I think he should definitely be a lock at the U seventeen World Cup this fall. You know, if his club releases him, maybe if he's such a key part of that Eintracht Frankfurt um, U nineteen team, that might be a little tough. But right, and that I, seems to be the concern with some of these high level players. Austin, you're saying that uh, you know the club has to agree to release them there. Right. You know, we may run into the same issue with uh, with maybe Gio Reyna if uh, he's ever announced to uh, Borussia Dortmund. But yeah. We'll see. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely encouraging news from uh, from Mason. So now we want to move over to a few goalkeepers to finish off this segment. And the first would be Jonathan Klinsman. So unfortunately, Jonathan did not play any minutes with Hertha Berlin's first team this year. Um, you know, he turned 22 this season. We thought this was kind of his season to either make an impact at Hertha or or move on, and it looks like that latter uh, option is is going to be the path that that his career takes. So, you know, he ended up playing about twenty, uh, excuse me, one thousand two hundred and sixty minutes in fourteen games for Hertha two this year. Had uh, nineteen goals conceded, or about one point three six goals per game conceded, and also had four clean sheets. You know, he split time exclusively with another 20-year-old German keeper. Um, they basically split, you know, every other game throughout the season. So not the it's most a little difficult to get into a groove, Austin. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It definitely makes it difficult. Um, and it kind of showed to, to me, at least, that he wasn't like a super high prospect on their list. You know, anytime you're splitting time as a keeper, that's probably not the best thing. Yeah, um, very concerning. Yeah, so, you know, all our concerns were kind of 
you know, legitimate or legitimize, I guess I should say, at the end of the season here where Hertha declined to pick up his contract extension. So, um, you know, now it sounds like uh, Jonathan will be going to FC St. Gallen over in Switzerland. And that team is familiar to us, Pat, because that's where Kakuta Mane used to play before that's he right. back to MLS. That's right, a, a former, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we'll have to see what that move holds. Um, I'm not really sure what his standing will be at the club uh, over in Switzerland, but, you know, he'll probably be a bench player. I can't see him being a, a lock starter, but, you know, definitely uh, cool to see him try to, you know, make it again or make it, you know, make some more of his career abroad before right. I think he eventually comes back to America. But, uh, you know, he may also still play a role for us in U23 Olympic qualifying. So, uh, yeah, definitely another player to, you know, still keep your eye on. I, I'm not sure he'll ever be a, you know, first team USMNT keeper, but, you know, if he can continue to refine his game, maybe he'll, uh, you know, have kind of a late bloom. That's he's right. Got the, he's got the size for to be a good yeah, goalkeeper. So definitely has a great, yeah, the great size frame. So hopefully the, those skills uh, will develop, Austin. Yeah, and now uh, let's move on to our final player for today. And uh, Pat, who would that be? And that is uh, another uh, goalkeeper, Austin. That is uh, Brady Scott um, with FC uh, Colm. So he's actually uh, 19, year old, 19 years old, and the soon to be twenty. I think his birthday here is at the end of June. Um, so yeah, you know he's. Um, you know, still, uh, you know, very, very young for a goalkeeper. Um, and just to highlight his performances, Austin. So he had 18 appearances for uh, Colnes uh, two, their second team there. Um, oh, and then he was also uh, had a few three appearances with the U19s. Um, so he kind of, you know, mainly was with the, the second team there. But he had a definitely a brief period there where he, uh, you know, had some injury knocks and kind of lost a spot for a little while. So that was a little concerning. But you know, able to kind of grab it back there. Um, towards the end, but I want to, I guess, kind of highlight more of, uh, of his U20 uh, World Cup performances and um, a little concerning because he had some, uh, you know, some mistakes there and just, you know, wasn't all that good in, uh, in terms of reacting and, uh, you know, being able to save some that at least maybe he should have um, and got, you know, benched, uh, I think it was twice, Austin. Yeah, essentially. Um, you know, maybe getting benched was a, is a harsh term. Yeah, a little year. too harsh. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it definitely seemed like Tab Ramos preferred David Ochoa, at least, you know, in that game against Ecuador. That was the biggest game of the tournament. And he, you know, went with David over uh, Brady. So, you know, Brady looked shaky all tournament. I think he did what was asked of him, but he definitely didn't uh, wow us. Yeah. I'm speaking for you as well. No, no, yeah, I, I am in complete agreement. Just because I think, uh, you know, he's no Ethan Horvath, uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> your boy, uh, that's my boy. I had to throw him in there, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I just think he, um, you know, it's in a very uh, interesting situation, Austin, just because um, I don't think he's ready to take that next step up, and uh, I'm not sure how, you know, how much time or patience Colm's gonna have, um, you know, with some other, you know, players. I'm sure the constantly throwing into the academy and cycling up that I'm not sure of his, uh, you know, ceiling there, whether he'll ever be a, uh, um, you know, you know, uh, I guess in a way in a, in a Bundesliga keeper, I'm not sure, but maybe he does have a place in the two Bundesliga or the future. That's all speculation. But I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm not as high as I am on some of our other keepers in the pool. Yeah. And it's not even, he doesn't really have great size either. So it's not like he has, you know, that just, unique physical ability or, or, you know, physical stature that um, teams fall in love with or will we'll give some more time to kind of develop some of the other aspects of his game. So, yeah, I don't predict seeing him, um, you know, stay very long or very much longer over in Germany. But, you know, time will tell. We'll see. You know, stranger things have happened before. So, <laughs> That's right, Austin. Stranger Things, and uh, you know, um, still like you said, still young, and uh, you know, hopefully he can uh, you know turn it around here and uh, have a positive upswing. Right. So you know, that's it for our review of you know all our American players who played in Germany. Um, we hope you guys like this this type of review. I know it's a little bit longer, but um, you know, feel free to use the the uh, you know timestamps in the bio to kind of jump through and see what players we talk about and. Uh, 
you know, pick out your favorite players and, and listen to our segments on them. Thanks. So now, uh, yeah, now let's move over to our reaction to the USMNT game against Guyana. Well, the USMNT was able to beat Guyana 4-0 to start the Gold Cup. And, you know, to be honest, they looked pretty decent in this game. Um, you know, they came out with more of a fight than I thought we'd see. Um, you know, obviously they weren't as sharp as I think we, we all wanted them to be. But they were able to get the job done against uh, you know, far inferior side in Guyana. And uh, you know, first off, it was great just to see Christian Pulisic get back on the field. And uh, you could just see, you know, his silky touches on the ball and just how how much of a different level he's on than most of the players he's on the field with, even on our team. And uh, you know, it was very, very good to see him back on the pitch. Um you know, he was the most consistent performer in this game. You know, anytime he touched the ball, um, you know, good things happen. So it's always nice to see that we have, uh, you know, that in our back pocket when uh, things get a little tougher here going on in the Gold Cup. But, uh, yeah, so it was good to see Christian back. Um, you know, one of the concerning things coming away from this game is the West McKinney injury. And, um, you know, we really weren't sure how it happened. Um, I didn't really see any good camera angles of when it took place, but, you know, it looked like a, a hamstring injury and, you know, Weston's had his fair share of muscle injuries over the past year, year and a half. And he's had some horrible luck, uh, you know, playing for the USMNT and getting injured. So let's hope this one doesn't keep him sidelined for too long because, you know, as you could see during this game, he was, um, you know, a crucial, crucial part of, you know, what we plan on doing in this tournament. And, you know, he was a big reason why we scored the very first goal that, uh, you know, Paul Areola had and Weston was able to pop in that nice, uh, you know, through ball into the box and just perfect weight on the pass. Um, and, you know, he did really good, in my opinion, going forward tonight. You know, a little inconsistent at times where, you know, he took some loose touches or had some errant passes, but he provided a lot of cover defensively and was really able to just, you know, get us back into the game at times when, you know, we started, uh, you know, not looking so good, especially in the first half. So, you know, let's hope Weston will be, be able to get back on the field pretty quickly. You know, the injury didn't look too serious, but you never know with muscle injuries. Um, and he didn't sit on the bench. He went right down the tunnel to the, the locker room. So I was a little bit concerning. Um but I guess, you know, the next thing we have to talk about in this game was, you know, the emergence of Tyler Boyd and and how impressive he was in this game. You know, coming in, we didn't really know, um, you know, coming into this camp or, you know, this group of um, games, we didn't really know, you know, what type of player Tyler Boyd was. Obviously, we covered in this show some of his performances from, you know, his time over in Turkey, but you know, kind of like Stu Holden said in the broadcast, that only, you know, helps us so much. We kind of wanted to see him in person, see what he could bring, you know, especially to this team and, the, you know, what he could bring to this group of players when he was on the field. So, you know, I think we got a lot of those questions answered tonight. Obviously, it was against Ghana or, excuse me, Guyana, not Ghana, um, which is, you know, a lesser opponent. So, you know, I think we should you know, take his performance with a little bit of a grain of salt, but I think it was, you know, a great performance from him tonight. Um, you know, he looked very confident in the final third, had some really good ideas. Um, you know, some of his crosses into the box were really good too. And uh, yeah, he was, he was the type of player we, we were, you know, sorely lacking at the wing position. And um, it was good to see him, you know, flank Paul Areola, who had his moments in this game, but also was a little shaky from time to time. But uh you know, I, I feel pretty comfortable with him on the pitch. You know, obviously Christian will be, you know, the centerpiece of our team in this tournament and, and you know, everything should kind of run through him. But, uh, yeah, it was great to see Tyler Boyd score those two goals. And, uh, you know, going into the next game, I guess we the one thing I do want to bring up, um, you know, as we go on to play Trinidad and Tobago and then finish up with Panama, I was a little concerned, especially in the first half when it took us some time to really – you know, create some some good, wholesome chances. Um, I'm just a little concerned about our ability to score goals. Um, you know, Jossie's artist in this game, while he did score, you know, that interesting goal off his, uh, off his face, I really, you know, don't think he had a great performance at all. Um, I'm not sure if he even had any good touches in this game, to be completely honest. It just seemed like, 
you know, when the ball went to him, he either, you know, took it back and kind of disrupted the momentum of the game or momentum of the, the sequence or just had a, you know, pad touch, get away from him and, um, you know, kind of create more problems than, you know, help him get into good positions. So I can't believe I'm saying it, but, you know, looking at this roster, I think it's, it's, you know, it, it needs to be done. But I, I really think Josie Altidore, you know, needs to come on the pitch. And um, if he's not healthy right now, he needs to get healthy soon because I think, you know, if we play Zardes against Trinidad, we might struggle a little bit more to score goals. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm not comfortable with uh, the way Zardes played today of relying on him to be our, you know, consistent nine in this tournament. So, um, yeah, like I said, Paul Areola was – I thought good for the most part. Um, you know, he had some bad moments in the game. But, uh, you know, I think we're really going to have to rely on Christian Plissick to score most of our goals this tournament. Um, hopefully we can kind of rely on Tyler Boyd, too, to get in on the action and, you know, create some chances for himself. And, yeah, like I said, I think Josie Altidore needs to get healthy and, uh, you know, play a part in these next two group stage games. So, all in all, you know, great uh, – well, maybe not great, but I would say a great night. And uh, a fairly good performance, um, you know, a good opening performance, I think. You know, there's still a lot to build upon, but it was a game that we dominated or maybe not dominated, but controlled, I think, from start to finish. And and that was what I wanted to see. So, you know, let's, uh, let's hope we come out uh, against Trinidad on Saturday. You know, look, you know, as confident as we looked towards the end of the game. And, um, you know, hopefully we see Weston McKinney back on the pitch. But... You know, that's all from our, uh, you know, quick coverage of the, the Guyana game. Now let's head over to Quick Kicks. All right, guys. And finally, after the exciting uh, episode filled with content, it's about that time of the show. It's none other than Quick Kicks. Let's see you could test Dwayne Miller. It's Altidore over the wall. So to start Quick Kicks today, we actually have two young yaws for you guys to follow. So the first one would be Matthew Hope, who is an 18-year-old striker who just moved over to Schalke's Academy from Barca's Residency Academy in Arizona. And he was actually the leading scorer in the uh, Development Academy this past season, scoring 29 goals in 37 games. So congrats, Matthew. That's awesome, awesome. Another uh, goal scorer there. And uh, we're going to uh, head over to uh, Sacramento Republic and uh, Travian Sousa, a 17-year-old left back who just recently transferred uh, and will be going heading over to Germany and Hamburg this summer. So uh, congrats to Travian there. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel down below. And as always, guys, make sure to also check out our social media, Instagram and Twitter. We're always putting out great quality content for you guys. That's right. And thanks for bearing with us for this long episode today. You know, there's a lot of players to discuss in Germany. Um, you know, it's a good thing, Pat. We got a lot of uh, a lot of players over in Germany. So That's hopefully right, awesome. some of the, the next episodes when we do our reviews of some of the other countries will be a little bit shorter. But uh, yeah, let us know how you like this review. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of talent in the pipeline, Austin. Uh, also, uh, if you guys have any other specific players in Europe, uh, England, and other countries uh, we're going to cover, uh, by all means, uh, please uh, drop them in the comments below or on social media of who you want us to talk about. That's right. And uh, Pat, you know, it seems like it's that time of the show once again. And I just have one thing to say. And what one is that, Austin? <laughs> one day we will win the World Cup.